Okay, so about nine months ago, Melee sent me this mini PC. Uh, it's a quieter 2Q and uh, it's silent and I've been using it ever since as my go-to Windows device. I've used it to side load things to my Oculus Quest VR. I've used it to set up my 3D printer. I've played some old Steam games on it. It's been my go-to Windows device and I really, really like it. So when they offered to send me a quieter 3Q, I jumped to the chance because this has quite a few improvements on the original but it's the same form factor it's still completely silent and i want to see what i can run on it so let's have a look at what comes in the box now i'm not a fan of unboxing videos so here's what comes inside so the pc looks exactly the same as the old one uh, connectivity looks exactly the same i'll go through that in a minute uh, there's a mount to be able to basically wall mount it or put it on the back of a visa monitor we've got a quick start guide this is a cooling pad for an m.2 drive we've got a power adapter with uh, european and uk and also i've got four screws here as well so looking at the front of it we've got the power switch three usb three sockets a usb three socket on the back two hdmi monitor outputs uh, also a headphone and what looks like microphone, there's a little symbol there, a micro SD slot, which is easy to miss because it's tiny, USB-C input, an Ethernet jack, and this is just a Kensington lock on the side. And you can run operating systems from USB or the SD card slot, or you can add a drive inside, but it already has an eMMC drive in it, so let's boot it up. Okay, so first up, let's try some Dolphin emulator, which is GameCube and Wii games. I'm gonna do the GameCube games. Now it did have uh, a different version of this Dolphin emulator and it didn't have Vulkan and Vulkan makes all the difference on this. So if we go to graphics, uh, you can see here back end. The version I had before didn't have Vulkan in this part. And uh, since I've turned it on, it's made it much, much better. Now I haven't tried Auto Model Easter, so let's try that. Okay, so it's shown 60 before the race has started. It's taken off all right uh, now I'm using the digital stick because I haven't mapped the analog stick because I uh, use the digital stick for Dave mirror and uh, it's a bit twitchy I'm not really used to this game but uh, oh and I've spun it I'm catching up the other cars although as soon as I go through a corner oh now I've made it no I've spun it again so let's try a bit of Simpsons hit and run. Yeah, that seems to look good. 60 FPS is showing. Let's jump into the car and have a little drive around. A little bit GTA-like. <laughs> yeah, that handles absolutely fine. It looks like it's keeping a solid 60. And the graphics look really decent. Yeah, very happy. Oh. Yeah, very happy with that. So Dave Mirror Freestyle BMX2, let's see how this runs. Oh, uh, I'm trying to look at the FPS, it was at 60 before I fell. Holding 60, it feels alright. Yeah, that's working really well. No complaints with that. I would definitely play that on this system. Oh. Now the system I'm running at 720, but only for gaming. I was running it at 1080 to do all the installations and everything, but uh, 720 is definitely better for gaming on a more modest CPU. So let's go straight in with GTA 5, which took ages to install. I had to install it on a separate four terabyte drive because the game is massive. Okay, so if I move the camera around, if I just hold it to the right and hold it to the left, it actually looks pretty smooth. I'm quite happy with that. You can see all the, the view distance is pretty good as well. So let's jump into a car. The frame rate, I realize, is showing incredibly low, 23, 24 FPS, and I'm not even driving the car yet. But it doesn't actually feel that slow. So if I move around, I had to cut that bit out because of the swearing. See the shadows and everything, like the detail in this game. Uh, for quite an old game, it's just amazing, really. Such an amazing game environment. Oh. Well, they caught me. <laughs> I thought if I hit out the way, I wouldn't be caught. Okay, so I eventually managed to lose them. Let's just get out of the car and have a quick look around. 
And to be fair, even going through that mission and going at high speed, being chased by the police and everything, it was still playable. Yes, it definitely could be smoother. It is a low frame rate, but uh, I'm actually quite amazed to get the rate that I was getting. So I'm gonna show a few more things on Windows, um, but I wanted to do a bit of a recap. So uh, I'm using a four terabyte drive with the Windows games on it because there isn't enough room on the device to put a load of big games, especially something like GTA, which I think is about 80 or 90 gig. Uh, I'm using my Xbox 360 controller with the adapter there. And I'm gonna show some more operating systems in a minute. So on here, I've got Batacera, which is a multi-game emulator system. On this SD card, I've got Chrome OS Flex, which is a newer version of Chrome. And uh, on the SSD drive, I've got KDE Plasma, the Fedora version. So let's go back into the desktop and launch some more games. Okay, so let's try a bit of Dirt Rally and see how well that runs. This always looks like a decent game, uh, even though it's quite old now, this version. You can see the graphics still look pretty sharp, even at 720. Quite a hairy track, this. Quite difficult. But yeah, it handles really well and actually feels pretty smooth. It says 24, 25 FPS. I don't know how accurate Fraps is on this because it, to me it looks pretty smooth. <laughs> Apart from the track. So we can't cut this one. Oh, I clipped something then. <laughs> yeah, again, the, the FPS counter doesn't seem to be that accurate because that certainly feels a lot smoother than the 24, 25 that it's reporting. That feels fine. Even though I'm driving really badly. So let's try something else. So Super Hot is a game that I first played on Xbox, but uh, it also works really well on VR. But this version is not the VR version. And if you haven't played this before, it looks like it's playing really slow because it's uh, as you're moving, the other actions of the enemies are happening at the same time. So don't worry if it looks really slow. So you can see when you're moving, they're moving. So what you have to do, and also if you fire ahead of them, oh, that didn't work very well. So maybe this one, but I can't fire again until the gun is ready. But they haven't got guns, so it doesn't matter. So if I run towards them, you'll be able to see that it's working at the right speed. <laughs> Very hard when you're trying to do it fast. I want to say about the operating system, it really does feel faster on this. I need to check if the drive is faster. Now, if I have a look at my other video, I think I probably did a speed test on the drive. Yeah, so I've just checked and I did use Crystal Disk Mark before. So let's download that. And it's the same version, 8.0.4, that's great. So I'm using exactly the same settings, so let's hit all. So every single result is considerably faster in these new tests. So you can see on the left, I've got the quieter two results from my previous test. Uh, and on the right, I've got the quieter three. So 248 goes against 30425, so much quicker read. And then the write speed 146.79, and the write speed was 185.70. That's considerably better results. Uh, and the same on all the rest of them. I won't read through all of them, but you can see for yourself side by side that it is consistently better results. So they are definitely using a better EMMC drive in this, which will make a huge difference to performance. Using a computer as a desktop, it really helps a lot. So let's show that desktop in action and let's call up a web browser and uh, we'll go to YouTube and we'll just play uh, a 1080 video and just see how quick it all comes up. The browser feels really, really snappy. So Lee PSP video HDR, this is my 4K video. So if I started playing and let's And let's skip the advert, and skip the trial, uh, and go straight to 1080. First of all, go full screen, and we'll turn on stats for nerds. But I think you can see that it is very snappy. Uh, so eight frames dropped at 196. So we'll see if that continues to go up. It looks like it's stabilized already. Yeah, it's not struggling with that at all. So let's try uh, 1440 video and see if it drops frames on that. I'm running a 1080, actually I'm running a 720 desktop uh, on this computer at the moment. It's not, yeah, it's not dropping at 1440 either. Uh, so, so let's go and might as well try 4K and see if it can handle that. 
Hopefully it can. So no frames dropped. Yeah, very, very good. No, no complaints on that at all. Right, let's come out of that. And uh, let's open a few more pages. Uh, I'll leave the video playing. So BBC Sport uh, and launch that page. He's fast, isn't it? Uh, Hot UK deals. And let's do Raspberry Pi. And open that page. Uh, open the Hot UK deals one. Bing does something different. There you go. Accept all and scroll down. Yeah, really, really nice performance on that. And just everything uh, opening up and changing all the settings and everything, it just seems really responsive. So uh, I'm definitely happy with that. But let's try some of these other operating systems. So let's go for Chrome OS Flex next, which is on an SD card. I'm not sure it does boot from an SD card because when I tried it before, it didn't show up, but I'm gonna, be, gonna give it another go. Okay, so let's shut this down and uh, put an SD card in. So the slot, I can use the Quiet 2 to show this. Uh, on the back, there's the little tiny SD card slot. So I'm gonna put the little Samsung SD card in there. Yeah, that's it. And once the red light goes out, I'm gonna get rid of my four terabyte drive because I don't need that anymore. And let's switch on, but I'm gonna press F7 on boot. So you can see what it's doing. It's given me a boot screen, but I don't think it's got the SD card. EMMC, uh, network boot, no. So it doesn't seem to detect the SD card on boot. So I'm gonna pop the SD card in an SD card reader. I thought the Quieter 2 did do that, but maybe it didn't, maybe I didn't test it before. So I'll use one of these USB slots on the side here. And I don't think it's picked it up, so I'm gonna do Control Alt Delete and restart that. And I did F7 again, and now I've got UEFI SD card reader. So let's click on that. So this is the installation program that I'm using here. So uh, it comes up and you have to tell it exactly what you're using it for. But you can use this to install it onto an SSD drive or USB stick or something like that. So I can do browsers guess, just to show what it looks like. And as you can see, it just looks like Chrome OS. Uh, but this is their newer, sort of lighter version without the Android store or anything like that. But let's just show it running from the SD card in a USB stick and uh, performance is is decent on this as well uh, and it would be even better if you put it on a faster drive and installed it properly and if we go into this part you can see we can call up all the all the apps and things like that but it's a nice operating system uh, if you want to give to someone who really doesn't know a lot about computers it's a very safe operating system as well I would say uh, from an antivirus point of view there's not an awful lot of trouble you can get into with Chrome OS so let's shut down Chrome and show Batisera so I can unplug this USB. I've got a USB SATA cable, which I can plug my SSD drive into. So that's a faster drive than the SD card, definitely. Uh, right, let's start that up, and again, F7. Oh, my mistake, it's Fedora on the SSD drive, so let's boot that anyway. Uh, I can't remember which partition. This, this is fine to use the first partition, so you can see here it automatically launches and let's sign in. So I've been playing around with Fedora and uh, it, it works really nice with KDE Plasma as a desktop environment. So if I press the Windows key and I start typing, uh, so say so I start typing Xmoto, you can see I've already installed uh, a motorbike game on there. This is a very simple Linux game, but I really like it. And in the physics levels, there was a really good one in here, uh, which is this one, Domino Effect. This is such a good level. And uh, so basically you've got to get up onto here, but then you've got to keep it going. No, I didn't manage that. So get up onto here, but then keep on moving with it. I'll get it in a second. That's probably the one. Uh, and so you have to keep moving it, but also going back. Oh no, I didn't manage it that time either. Uh, basically riding along on there, because when you get to the end here, you've got to go over this and you're not going to do that without the big boulder that's going along there. But yeah, such a great game. Uh, but I've got something a bit more impressive to show from a graphics point of view. So under games, so I guess it's pronounced Xenotic. I'm going to need to plug in a mouse for this because a trackpad would be awful. So there you go. I've got a mouse in here now. Battery, 30%. You can see here, single player. Haven't done anything to this. I did just 
briefly try this just to see it was working but I haven't really properly played it and I was using the trackpad so it was awful and this can be installed from the store that comes in this operating system as standard so jump to enter the game so this seems very fast very very responsive and I guess the people are going to be much better at this game than me I don't play loads of first person shooters oh. Oh, oh, oh. pretty frantic but you can see the, the frame rate is really good that was nice <laughs> there you go, I think you can see it's running pretty well. And last up, Batacera. So let's unplug this drive and plug in the USB stick. This is a Samsung bar. Really nice for running an operating system on because they're pretty fast. Not as fast as an SSD, but a lot faster than an SD card and most USB sticks. So let's turn that on and F7 again. And this menu comes up again and you can see here it says Samsung flash drive. So let's start that and Batacera launches nice and quick. Well, this is a surprise. I wasn't expecting PS2 to be working, but uh, it actually looks pretty decent. And the sound is decent as well, but just to show that it seems to be running pretty well. It's actually quite hard, this one. Oh, oh that, was, that was the wrong button. I'm used to playing FIFA too much. But yeah, you can see that it's actually working at quite a nice speed. Uh, it is perfectly playable, the sound is pretty decent, and I just really wasn't expecting PS2 to be emulated so well in Batacera. It's not all perfect if I quit out of this and go to Burnout 3, the other PS2 game I've got on here. So the game launch is fine. So it seems to start off not too bad. Uh, I haven't got a frame counter on this at the moment, but uh, it isn't as fast as it should be. But uh, it isn't it isn't as slow as I thought it was going to be. Oh, you can hear the audio's going a bit there. Right, so let's quit out of that and just show some of the menus. So if I go back, you can see there's various different systems on here. PSP, NES, Super Nintendo, N64, all sorts of things on here. So let's show PlayStation Portable because God of War actually works pretty well on this at two times resolution. Couldn't get uh, Vulcan to work, but OpenGL works absolutely fine. You can see the graphics actually look pretty decent and uh, it does work nicely. And I, I played this for quite a bit earlier on and it keeps up with it really, really well. And on the menu, if you press F1, you get a file management system. Uh, and so you can see this is the USB stick I've just plugged in. And if I go into my ROMs folder on this USB stick and look for PS2, I've just copied Castlevania over, so I'm going to give that a try. So if I go into the share folder and ROMs and obviously PS2, I can paste this in. Super, super easy way of transferring files over. And if you want to know more things that run on these mini PCs with the Celeron processors, I've got a load of other videos that show some other computers that I've tried. And uh, it's pretty impressive what you can get to run on them. And it's worth showing in the share folder how many different systems there are available. So you can see under ROMs. So there's all sorts of things that I haven't tried here. Xbox is there, interestingly, which I don't know if it is supported or not. Wii U is, uh, is there as well, which is nice to see. And also PS3 as well. So some of the newer systems are on there but I don't know if it's supported in this particular build. The build I downloaded was not the one for the most powerful of processors so uh, yeah you probably need a much more powerful computer especially for something like PS3. Right so let's close that window so that will take us back into Batacera. Go back to PS2 and it doesn't show up so we need to uh, restart this. So the sound in the intro was absolutely fine. Yeah, all of this looks nice. Yeah, running great. I really didn't think I was going to be able to get PS2 running on this. And uh, it's running and actually looks pretty decent. It looks nice and fast, very responsive. The sound is perfect as well. So I've been using this PC for three or four days now and I've been playing around with it and installing things and doing all sorts with it. And I'm very used to the quieter 2 
this is much better performance. I'm, I'm actually surprised at how noticeable the difference is in performance. Now, obviously some of that is gonna be that faster drive. The drive was faster on all aspects, uh, but also we have a chip upgrade as well. So the J4125, I've reviewed three different J4125 mini PCs in the past and they've all been fine. Uh, I've actually enjoyed using them for a desktop experience, no problem at all. Things like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, web browsing, they just cope with it very well. But this 5105 is definitely an improvement. So let's have a look. So it's 10th generation, so a generation newer. All of this is the same four cores, four threads. Even the standard base frequency is two gigahertz, but when it turbos, it turbos higher. So 2.9 gigahertz on one core is better performance. It's actually slightly lower on all cores, 2.6 compared to 2.7. Uh, but the graphics is also quite a lot better as well. So 0.25 gigahertz compared to 0.45 gigahertz and so nearly twice the speed. Uh, the GPU turbo is a little bit faster as well. It's an 11th generation GPU compared to a 9.5. It's 10 nanometer compared to a much older 14 nanometer. And if we go through, so the memory bandwidth is also quicker as well. So there's a lot of improvements on this newer processor and I can definitely feel it. I've definitely seen the results and uh, I'm really pleased with it. So I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much to Melee for sending me this mini PC to test. Please like and subscribe.